Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me for this new series that I'm starting uh, about designing your own games, a guide to understanding design for interactive games. My name is Alex Renai. Um, I have uh, designed a couple games in the past. I am a vector artist and uh, through the years of designing and getting to know my audience I I've had a lot of questions asked and so I thought I'd put together this uh, series of videos about uh, just that, about how to get started and game design. Um, the first lesson that we're going to have is basically an intro to characters and just uh, creating your characters, uh, setting them up, um, what style sheets are, understanding who your characters are, and then um, a couple workflows uh, that will help you uh, understand how to manage a character into animation or into a uh, into programming for um, for the game. Uh, before we get started, um, this is pretty much designed for anybody that wants to get into game design. Um, it doesn't quite matter what your artistic level is. Um, there's there's a lot of resources out there nowadays that will help you uh, gain some knowledge and some skill into uh, digital drawing and 3D modeling and things like that. But uh, if you're an aspiring game artist uh, with little or no knowledge of game art um, or the workflows of, of digital art, uh, this is for you. Um, if you're a digital artist or 3D modeler um, and you've made art in the past but you don't quite understand how to progress into the next step, which is making those pieces of, of art, those models uh, or, or, or drawings, putting them into uh, a game. Uh, these are the programs that I will be using through the series. Um, I use Affinity Designer for all of my 2D, all of my exporting um, uh, of, of 2D graphics and uh, all of my, my sprite sheets. Uh, for 2D graphics. Anything that has to do with 3D modeling, I'm using Autodesk Maya. And the game engine that uh, I prefer to use is Unity, and I can use, um, I can show some of the animation and, and how to implement your sprite sheets into that. Now, you don't have to have any of these programs to dive into game design. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of resources out there, a lot of free programs, a lot of um, very, very high quality. Uh, programs out there that you can get a hold of uh, if, if this is something that you want to just get a feel for before you invest uh, in, in, in any programs. Um, I, I think all except for um, Autodesk Maya um, are, are pretty much free or very inexpensive. So, um, you know, if there's alternatives that you're interested in, just look online, see what it is that you like, but you don't have to use these programs. It's just what what I like to use. So before we get started, uh, and before you get started on on a game, these are some questions that you should ask yourself about what type of game and and why you're making a game. So the the first one's pretty easy. Uh, it's what genre of game are you wanting to make? Um, are you wanting to make a puzzle game? Are you wanting to make something more action-based? Is this going to include an avatar that you're going to switch around items with where it's going to interact with somebody? Is this an idle game where it's a lot of um, UI or, or menus? Is this an RPG? Um, all of these questions and, and, and the answers to those are going to help you design the type of character that you need because for all of those different uh, genres of games, and, and there are a lot that are not on that list, mind you. Um, there are different mechanics to how a character needs to be designed, uh, and understanding those games is going to help you understand the type of character that you need to design. And the best thing to do, really, is to just look at the games that you like. See the games that inspire you to create games. Um, figure out how they work, how... how um, you know, they're styled, and then figure out which ones you, you're, you're most comfortable starting with. Uh, the second thing that you might want to ask yourself is what style of art are you going to want to create? Again, going back to this, uh, the, the, the previous point, is whatever is inspiring you to create 
this these characters or these games it usually is going to have a certain style that you like and you can go online search all kinds of different styles there's you know pixel art is very specific isometric art is very specific um, you know stylized if it's going to be 3d flat again there's a lot of um, things on that are not on here but uh, it, understanding what style of art you're going to want to produce whether it's your own style or you're going to try and emulate something else is definitely going to help you set up your characters so one of the thir first things that we're going to do just for this uh, lesson understanding characters and what um, creating style sheets is um, we're gonna go here into uh, my project here of character style sheets so basically a style sheet is a reference sheet of your character or characters that pretty much explains either what your character is about or very specific features that your character will have uh, that are going to help either another artist that you might bring along later on or a uh, an animator or or, or just yourself um, to to create more characters or better movement or things of that nature so one of the uh, the, the the basic style sheets is is one like like this where you know um, basically you've got here's a, a cute character right uh, and it tells you why it's cute okay so if you're going to be making a ton of different cute characters and you want to show okay what it what do you need for a character to be cute in your perspective you're going to see over here they put you know the head is large in relation to, to, to the body the eyes are spaced low um, you know all sorts of different um, cues that you're going to to look at so that when you get drawing um, either in digital form or, or in paper form or however you like to draw um, you can take these references and you can say okay well I, I need to draw a cute character uh, or an angry character or you know whatever type of character there is there's always going to be a, a, a good use for a style sheet like this uh, and just as an example um, to the right of this these are characters that um, that I produced for a game called Kingdom Island back in in you know 2010 to 2014 and I took a lot of my cues from uh, this page here of the cute characters uh, large head um, you know, small body, short arms, um, kind of fat legs. That's what makes a character cute and appealing if you want to go that route. Um, you know, another another version of, of what I'm making now that a lot of you currently know me for uh, is the, the Toonkins uh, characters. You know, they're kind of short, they're squishy, they're a little bit pudgy. Um, and so these are all things that uh, I, I, I put together. Um, now that's just one way to create a style sheet. Um, the other way to make a style sheet is sort of like what they've got going on over here, um, and they've done this with with Cuphead. Um, basically, you've got a snapshot here of different angles of view, different ways that the the feet are are positioned, different hand positions and then you have the the height of the character and this is really important if you're going to be drawing this character multiple multiple times in different poses in in in, in different uh, expressions it's going to help you just have a consistency of character and again not just you but anybody that is going to be drawing your character um, you know as part of your team or if you commission somebody to do this for you um, and, and you can see here, this is actually a Van Buren 1935 image, and you can see where um, the, the Cuphead artist got a lot of their, their, their reference from. Um, and it's very helpful to have, to have the heights. Um, sometimes in a style sheet, you're going to want to have sort of like this little, this little biography of who your character is, okay? Um, you, you know, some notes. So here it says, you know, that they, they were looking... At early forms of Minnie Mouse for inspiration, they took a couple key elements, and you can really see where that is from. Uh, and the reason, again, to have a style sheet like this is just to have a better understanding of who your character is, uh, what they're about, and to try and convey that to somebody else. For example, if you have a really good understanding 
of who your character is, but you don't quite know how to draw, you can give this explanation of who of what your character needs to be to another artist, and they can take that and you can say, okay, I understand. Um, you, you know, they like some Minnie Mouse inspiration. They like this this genre from 1935 of of uh, you know the rubber hose uh, style, um, and and they can try and really emulate what you're looking for. Um, here is another style of style sheet here, where you basically have a turnaround of a character. It gives you on the bottom the, um, the the height, which is also really again very important. You need to have a consistent height in your characters. You don't want to draw your character really tall in one pose and really short in another, unless it's part of an animation or unless it's part of a, a gimmick. Uh, but usually, if you're going to do a turnaround, you want it to 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 look really smooth. Um, here we have uh, a couple characters that I created again for for Kingdom Island, in which I did a turnaround. Uh, a style sheet, and uh, again, it's just basically when you, when you do these, you're gonna draw your your first image, and my first image was this center image of a front facing, because usually when you draw, uh, if you're not really used to drawing, if you're not somebody that that draws a lot, a front view is typically the easiest to 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 draw. Um, not always, but but usually that's where everybody starts. You know, they 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 have a front-facing character because it's typically symmetrical, and you can get into some asymmetry. But but usually it's it's the it's the best there. And so what you would then do is make these lines that you see going uh, on top and through of the height of the head, of of the height of the overall character. Um, you know, some some reference points to to where different body parts start and end, okay? And from there you start going into the different um, positions. So you have, you know, uh, you have here a three-quarter view. Um, you know, here it's going to show uh, kind of a, a silly face and how the, the face is going to stretch um, a walking pose, okay? And you can see that it's pretty consistent all the way through. You have the back of the character over here, uh, and then I have different versions of of these characters, all with different turnarounds, and so this um, these characters I actually ended up modeling in 3D, and these style sheets really helped me understand the overall proportions and and what was right and what was wrong about about the character. Okay, um, here we have uh, an, another version, kind of a mix of what we've been seeing, where you have uh, a a little bio about uh, this character, Martin, um, you know, what what he's about. And then over here you have, uh, for animation, uh, the, the, the different expressions, okay, um, how that artist chose to, to, to make him excited or angry or, or uh, kind of upset about something else. Um, so that's, that's, again, really, really important to, to know. Um, I am going to be working a lot with this, uh, this character here um, that uh, you're going to see. Basically, for, for, these, um, for this series, I'm going to be making a, a game almost from scratch uh, and showing you, uh, going through every step of the way, how I create the artwork and, 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 and put, it into, in, put it into the game. So uh, one of the things that I like to do with my style sheets is make these character rules. Okay, So I've got this little astronaut character. Uh, I've taken some style notes from the other style sheets. Um, you know, I've got my heights. Um, I've got my 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 reference points here, so I can make uh, different um, uh, rotations of the character. But here I have a set of rules. Okay, so the character is always going to be one and a quarter heads tall. It's not going to be any taller. It's not going to be any shorter. Again, unless there's some animation involved. Okay. I've got here the light, the line thickness of, of, of two points. That relates here to my stroke. Um, you know, when I'm drawing the character, I'm going to have it at, at, at two points. If, it, if I'm going to be enlarging it or reducing it, that's going to change a little bit. But the overall um, rule here is that every line that you see in this character is the same thickness. Okay, my light is coming in from the top right side down. You can see that there's highlights on the right, there's shadows on the left. Um, rounded corners, no sharp edges. So there are, you know, when you're when you're drawing, when you're when you're creating characters, 
and they kind of look off, it usually is because either you're not following the form of your character, uh, or that there's just so many different forms going on that they they, they kind of get a little bit um, mixed up to, to the eye. It's not very pleasing. And so when you make rules like this, like rounded corners, no sharp edges, or um, only, you know, s smooth curves, you know, no 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 sharp turns or anything like that, it, it really does help you understand, you know, if you were to make, uh, like, for example, these, you know, here's here's the, the character's feet. Everything is rounded. Everything is smooth. Everything is consistent, okay? And then I always like to have my color palette. Um, even though I have swatches available in, in, in this program, uh, having my colors available so I can always um, use my, my eyedropper tool to pick them up, that's, that's something that, um, that I value just because I could always pick up the right color if I lose it in my swatches or something like that. Okay, So going from there, um, we're going to move into um, taking this character and kind of splitting it apart. So now that I've drawn this character, this is just a drawing. There's really nothing that defines this as a game character yet. He can't move. It can't um, be manipulated. He's not split up in any kind of way. Um, this is usually where digital artists uh, are starting, and then the next step is really um, where it takes you into thinking how to translate this into a game, which is the difference between being a digital artist and being a game artist. Um, it's just the different way that you have to think about things. So now we're going to take a look into uh, this page over here. Um, and you can see there's a little bit of an update on, on this character. But I basically have everything the same. I just, you know, I added some eyes because I thought it'd be a little bit more appealing. Um, so there's a couple things to know about, um, and this it pertains specifically to 2D um, character art. Uh, when you model things in 3D, and I will be going uh, into 3D um, characters in, in another um, in another video, um, but uh, it's it's going to be a little bit different than, of course, having a, a 3D model. Um, and what I mean by that is, okay. If we take a look at the character and we see, okay, well, I want this character to um, to move. And again, this will go back to the questions from the beginning of the video of what kind of game this is going to be for. So let's suppose that um, we're going to be creating a platform, a platformer, uh, kind of Mario style, uh, that sort, that sort of game. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have basically a right and left movement, uh, jumping, crouching, that, that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm going to need this character to move. Um, and so I've got, you know, I've got to have his legs at the very least out of anything move. And so um, how am I going to make the legs move? Um, so, or the arms move? And what do I need to know about the arms? And if I want the character to have different expressions, what's that going to mean? And so what you typically uh, find is that this is going to take you into a different mindset, uh, into uh, designing your, your characters in a way that is going to make your life so much easier when it comes to splitting up different sprites. Okay, And sprites are just basically the images that are going to be put into the game. Uh, programming so that all of these actions and all of these things um, can 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 work. Um, so here you've got a split up view, and you can and you can see really well um, what defines this character as far as movement goes. So here I've got um, you know the, the the legs, and I'm able to uh, to to rotate them. I'm able to change them up. I've got this the body that I can do the same. I've got arms and hands. The reason why the hands are separate is maybe. Later on, I want to have the option to have the character holding something. And in order to have the character holding something, I may need to uh, change the overall grip of the character so that it looks like he's holding um, uh, the object instead of just having it uh, you know, floating there. And so the hand's going to be 
be separate, and then you've got the, the head as well. Uh, these are different variations of colors, just to try out, just to try and see, you know, maybe um, as part of uh, a, a part of the game, uh, you can change an outfit, you know, as as a as an upgrade or, or something of that sort. But just just something in 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 that sense. And then over here, I've got um, the the back view and the front view, and you have the the eyes, the different types of eyes that you're going to need. You can notice here that one eye is actually a little bit uh, more um, is a little shorter on a on a horizontal plane than it is uh, on the on the front facing so these are things that you need to have and then I have for just blinking um, these these different lines okay so I've taken this character and I've put it into all the different um, views that I'm going to have okay so I have my my just like I did in, in in the style sheet, I have the front, the the the, the quarter of view, and the other quarter of view, and the back, and then I have my walking animation. Now, your walking is going to be however smooth you want your walking to be. That's going to be based off of a couple things. Now you can create a couple walking um, spr uh, sprites, and so what you'd want to do, I'm just going to. Let me make this a little bit bigger here just to, sh to show you. Okay, there's there's a couple things that, that that you can do. There's there's some people that would prefer, you know, kind of the old school um, methods here, uh, which is basically you're taking your 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 sprites here, your your characters, and you're creating different frames. Okay, um, and so. All you have to do is put them into a sequence when you're done. Um, oops. We got the eyes here. Okay. And so you've got a little walking sequence. You can see how the character is going to go from the idle pose, start walking, take another step, step again. Now you can put as many frames as you want in between. Uh, usually, though, if you're using um, a game engine like like Unity or, or Unreal or something like that, where um, it, you know, or even if someone's programming this, for, you know, uh, with some sort of an animation input, um, you're going to take these elements and you're going to put them in individually. And in the game engine, um, you, you're going to have them animate. And and I'll show you that in in a in a later um, video. Right now, what's important is is basically understanding what parts of my character I'm going to need to move. Okay, um, what what parts of the character have to move in order for the character to be successful as a game character? Okay, the same over here. I've got um, you know a, a jumping animation. Now it's not so much an animation, but again a reference to how I would animate this once I put this in. Okay. Now let's say that a platformer isn't, you know, something that you're going to do, but you still want to use these characters to walk around a world or or, or something like that, and it, you want to um, customize, which a lot of a lot of games do. They allow you to customize, whether it be as a key element in a game like a virtual world, or whether it be a perk to, you know, gaining. Um, you know, once you level up, they'll give you some items or things like that. Uh, basically, just some some boosts for your for your game, so that there's a, some more interest. Okay. Um, so here I have the, the the same character, and I have a couple different views. And uh, if I were to want to make some items, for example, uh, like if I wanted to make a crown. Okay. Now I've got my stroke. And it's it's right at the same, even though it says 14. It's 14 because uh, this is a, a a wide view of this. This is a zoomed in view of this. Um, it's consistent with the rest of the character. Okay, so I'm going to make a little crown here. Okay, um, maybe that's just something that you that you get in the game. I don't know. Um, we haven't really defined what what kind of game this this is yet but I just wanted to show you um, something here so I've got my my crown I'm gonna take the 
There we go. So that's really cool. That's really great. Um, but if we go back into our rules here, look at that. No, no sharp edges. Rounded corners. Okay. Light coming from the top right side. So even though this looks, I mean, it doesn't look horrible. It doesn't look the, the best. It's not. It's not ready for this game yet. And I see a lot of people um, that are starting out. This is where they struggle the most. Is they they might see a tutorial online of how to draw something and the first thing they do is they draw that thing and they say okay well I'm ready to put this in my game when really what you want to focus on in any character is consistency you know you don't want to have uh, for example this okay this just doesn't look right if you're if everything in your game is gonna have outlines then everything in your game should have outlines right so let's fix this up real quick so that's 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 getting there um, even that's, even that's okay, um, but I would really do want to have a little bit more roundness, just because there, there's nothing else out here that, there we go, something like that, okay, and then we're going to create our shadow here, okay, I'm going to mess that in there, there we are. So already it's it's starting to look um, polished, okay. Move that here, good. And I just want to add one little, oops, one little highlight. At least here you could see, you know, somewhat of my of my workflow. But when it comes to workflow, and, and when you hear me talking about it, really what it means is just setting your self up correctly um, when you create anything when when your job is to draw something a lot when your when your job is to build something a lot you want to have your tools at your disposal so for example you see me using um, you, you know uh, my the strokes and 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 the swatches and, and the colors but even in things like effects you want to have you know this is why having a, a decent drawing program or um, or a decent game engine to help you uh, visualize these things is, is really good um, because you want to have your, your your guidelines you want to have your sets uh, so that everything is easy and at your fingertips you don't want to lose time um, you know f uh, pretty much fiddling around with, with with stuff that has nothing to do with with your art or your game or you know technical stuff everything you want to have there so part of the workflow for this part um, is is in the consistency of the line um, you know if I didn't have these rules set um, to, to help me or at least in the you know the back of my mind it really wouldn't um, it, you know I'd, I'd be sitting there trying to, to to make things look right on a bunch of different frames uh, things like that so here I'm going to just make the the other view I'm going to change that like that. Okay. I'm sure some of you are like, well, okay. Didn't didn't know how he was going to do that one. But there, there you go. I kind of cheated a little bit. Um, just to kind of get the point across, right? You know, I'm not really sure if I like that flat or round. I think I'm just going to keep it like that for now, okay? And then... This is going to be the same for that. Okay, so I'm going to have my my, my crowns, my, my different set of crowns. That's, that's that's good there. Okay, now these have to be separate because again, it's not part of the character. These are just bonus. Okay, um, so I'm going to have that like that. Um, I went ahead and added um, uh, different uh, different items just so that you can see. Um, just how consistent, uh, you know, the, the different, the, the style um, is with all the different items and how to how to put that through. Okay, so if I were to split this up, for example, um, this one particularly, or or this one particularly, because you have uh, this cape on the back of the character. Okay, um, all of this is pretty simple. Okay, as part of the head, 
But what I would probably do is have these little uh, neck pieces also as part of the head, so that if I wanted to say do something like that, I could. I, I could also make it part of the body. Um, actually, I might make it part of the body instead. Um, so I'll do that, and I will do. There we go. So that's part of that. Um, and this is actually just going to be behind it. Uh, it. It just has to be. There's, there's no, um, you know, I could probably do a little cutout. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is going back to this sort of thing. Um, something like this. This is a, you know, um, a mask or a cutout so that I can get things behind an object. Uh, without having to have layers of an object, not having to worry about um, depth sorting, things like that. Um, but for that, I'm just, I don't have a problem having that as a separate piece. Um, you, you know, the same same with that. But uh, basically, that's that's kind of what I had in mind for, for this first video, is just a, sort of an introduction to thinking about characters and, and how they should be planned out ahead of time um, because again when it comes to workflow when it comes to to um, you know working on things like this all the time it really makes your life a lot easier understanding that uh, you know if your character needs to move that it's going to have to be put into different components okay um, you can by all means draw a character in different positions and have it as one character. People have been doing that for animation, for example. Um, but if you're going to have a, a, a game in which your character has to have a range in motion or is going to have to pick up items or, or is going to be having items put on the character, uh, that's where the, the thought of it is really different. Um, you know, it's one thing to animate something. It's another thing to let somebody else manipulate it in the way that they want to you know if they want to pick something up and they want their their character to hold something um, that's something that's out of your control and so by your planning ahead of time it's going to make your game um, look and feel a lot more authentic than if uh, you know you you didn't really have a plan for it so that's that's kind of what I had in mind um, for the rest of the series here um, if I go back into, um, here we go. Uh, for, for for the rest of, of, of this series here, I mean, I'm still going to go into characters a little bit more. This was only the first session of characters. Um, there is going to be a video on 3D characters and my workflow for that and just understanding the difference between uh, 2D and 3D or incorporating, you know, 2D into 3D, how to get your 2D characters into 3D. Um, I'm going to have a, um, uh, some sessions about environments, um, what it takes to create environments for these characters. Uh, the reason why I have that second is that the rules that you're going to have for your characters usually are going to run into um, your environments. And so things like what I was, you know, doing earlier with line thickness and certain color palettes and, and um, you know, no sharp edges and things like that are typically, if you want your game to look uh, like a cohesive art style, they're going to be uh, similar rules. And then at the very end of, of, of this, I'm going to show you how to prepare your files, how to put everything into a sprite sheet, how to use those into programming, how to implement them into... Um, you know, for this example, Unity and how to make them th them all them all work out. Um, but I hope that this was somewhat helpful for you. I hope that uh, this inspired you. Um, keep a lookout for the rest of the the, the series. Um, I don't have any dates set for when I want to do these. These are just kind of something that I'm doing on my spare time when I get the chance uh, from making my games. Um, but if you have any questions, if you have anything that um, you know that you would like to to see or 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 you know some things that you want to comment on please comment um, in in the in, in the video or find me on on discord or through my social media um, 
you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here to, to answer questions and, and, and to hopefully help you get started into uh, the, the, the game world. It's really a, a, a fun and exciting time to make games. Uh, there's never been a, a, a better time to start. Uh, there's a lot of competition because everyone wants to do it, but at the same time you have, you know, amazing, amazing products and resources at your disposal and, uh, you know, just being able to take advantage of those things um, is, is, is really great. So, uh, again, thank you for joining me. Um, you, you know, um, just thank you. <laughs>